I started in goal uh, at the age of probably about 11 years old, 10, 11 years old. My dad was the coach of the local side we were playing for. Maybe around the 12, 13 years old, I started to realise that, hang on, I, I, I must be doing okay at it. Um, and uh, by that stage, I started to get slowly some a little bit more specialised goalkeeping uh, training. I knew I could only get to a certain level in Australia. I knew I could only play to semi-professional level. So the next step would be to go to Europe. Mum and Dad, both German immigrants into Australia. My dad always had a massive passion for football. So my, my first step would have to be to, to Germany. There was uh, a little bit of uh, anxiousness, the unknown, the, the stepping out of the comfort zone to, to the real world, to the world of professional football. It was an incredible learning experience. Um, a lot of lows, some highs in between, but mostly lows. So a lot of kicks in the teeth, um, but I wouldn't change anything because it made me so much stronger mentally um, and more desire, more, more determination and desire to, to prove critics wrong. I signed for Bradford City for 150,000 pounds. At the time, was it was a decent amount of money. You know, it was it was a lot of enough a decent amount of money for Bradford City, being the lower end of, of, of the first division at the time, uh, which is another championship. For, as far as I was concerned, it was heaven. I didn't. It was paradise. It was an opportunity to play football. Well, I was only at Bradford for three months, and I got a call saying that there's interest. I had interest from I think it was four clubs, and I was just like, really? And then I think yeah, Chris Kamara called me in and we had a discussion about it and he told me the clubs that, were, that had made offers for me and all sort of met the, the, the criteria of my release clause. And then he went on to talk about Middlesbrough. And, you know, he's from Middlesbrough, he's very close friends with Steve Gibson. And he went on to tell me that, you know, it's a, it's a great club and there's a, there's a, there's a huge uh, future up there and, and that the, you know, the owner of the club was looking to, to really invest and really create something special up there. I remember when I signed for the club, end of February, I think it was like 28th of February, the old transfer window, and, and we were on 19 points. We were, I think we were about six points adrift. And I, and I, I know people thought I was mad. <clears throat> and I was like, no, I'm not, because I, I just, I, I love the project. We knew, we knew we had hit the ground running, and I knew we had quality there. And the, one of the biggest issues was to, to not concede goals. And I know the manager felt that he had a problem in goal. From Sydney, by Kaiserslautern and Bradford City, tonight makes his home debut with the task of achieving only the fourth team sheet for Middlesbrough in the Premiership. Starting with that derby game, you know, it was, it was a phenomenal night. I know it was a cold, cold, wet night, but an ending in game where, yeah, I was heavily involved. Um, but I knew that if I could play my part, the rest would score goals because we had that quality. If you get given that opportunity, you always feel like you can make a difference. And I felt that I could make a difference. That's a good cross from Pierce. And Hoy Dong with a shot for the first save of the match. Hartson to run at Vickers. Super saved by Schwarzer. For me, what was unlucky was that I, you know, I, I, I got injured after about 13 games. Um, broke a bone in my leg and, and, I, and I couldn't play the rest of the season. A season of turmoil at Middlesbrough has ended in heartbreak. They will be playing their football in Division One next season. I felt really, really frustrated that I couldn't be part of the team. It was tough to take, it was really, really disappointing and you could see the, the disappointment, you could see the, how much it affected the, the community, how much it affected people working at the club, the fans and players, all alike. But I didn't think it was the end of the world. I, I, I was even more determined to get back fit again, to, to get back up again. And I felt that the core of the squad keeping them together and adding a few additions, that we would get back up again. And we did. Oh, good touch. Off a little bit, Marlon. You know, I had various goalkeeping coaches. I mean, I had Peter Shilton for three years, and his experience and knowledge of the game was incredible. Um, what he trained you at was what he was really good at. He's certainly uh, up there with, with the best in the country. Um, I think his strengths are that he's, his size 
Uh, he's tremendous on crosses. Um, probably one of the best I've seen. He's not only good at sort of catching crosses, um, you know, he's a, he's a great puncher as well for somebody as big as him. He'll stretch the top off. Heels on the ground. I became a lot, lot better in terms of one-on-ones, keeping your, your, you know, keeping your sort of set, center of gravity closer to the ground, to being really good at closing down reflexes on the goal line. You know, improved out of sight because of his his knowledge and his training methods. For, for a big fella, he gets down very quickly and very sharp, and uh, he, his all-round game's very good. He's just he's not had a lot of experience at, at top level, and um, he's learning all the time. And that's not a good kick out. And here's Cole, and this is surely it from Andy Cole, saved by Schwarzer. As a goalkeeper, the position you make one mistake, you switch off for a split second, that's it. So as a goalkeeper, you make a mistake, you cost your team right there, you lose a goal, you're behind. So you're up against it already. Um, so it's slightly different um, in terms of you, you, your concentration level for 90 minutes. It's the reading the game, understanding the flow of the game, um, being prepared and ready to make a, a save at a split second's notice. For Sal, quickly to his left. Do you chase a clean sheet? No. Do you pride yourself on a clean sheet? Absolutely. And it's right up there, and people do get judged a lot on clean sheets. But a clean sheet is not just down to a goalkeeper. It's down to a whole 11 players. No longer the caretaker, Stuart Pearce knows a win. His first match as permanent manager could take City into Europe. For Steve McLaren and Middlesbrough, though, a draw will be enough to secure a second season of UEFA Cup football. We knew that we needed to draw a win. We'd finish seventh and Manchester City needed to win to, to, to jump above us. So we went to uh, the Etihad knowing what we needed to do. Um, and we started the, work, the game really, really well. Jimmy Floyd Asperbank scored an absolute screamer of a free kick. And then I think midway through the second half or 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go, we conceded. And um, then you know, this is gonna be a, you know, dig the hills in, get in the trenches, and you're going to be up against it between now and the end of the game. And then there was all of a sudden a penalty given. So then all you're thinking is, if they score, we're, we're, we're going to miss out in Europe, and what a way to go out. This for a potential UEFA Cup jackpot. Then up steps Robbie Fowler, and you're just going, oh no, Robbie Fowler, you know, he doesn't really miss. So, and all you're thinking, right, okay, stand on your feet, do your best, see what you can do. And the thing is, I waited for him. I didn't, I didn't guess. I just waited and went, right. I thought, you make the first move. And hopefully, by doing so, you, you don't hit it as well as you hoped you would. And he didn't hit it as well. And I managed to save it. We ended up holding on and winning, you know, drawing the game and qualifying for Europe. So yeah, it was monumental for us. once more towards the back post. Oh. Tremendous save by Schwarzer. Heskey in there. Oh, that's a magnificent save by Mark Schwarzer. Fabulous stop that by Schwarzer. There were various people at the club thought that I was past it, that I was no longer up to the level uh, to play in the Premier League. And that was the overwhelming feel feeling I got. Maybe their expectation of me was different. Maybe they thought um, I wasn't good enough anymore. And so for me, I just felt, you know what? It's best for everyone. I move on and just literally walk out the door. And I literally just walked out the door. There we go. I left and I went to Fulham. I, I bought into the project. I felt wanted. I felt like they desperately wanted me at the club. I had a car and I went to a garage because it broke down. And, and uh, the guy was a Fulham fan. And he, the first thing he said to me, he says, oh, you just, yeah, you just signed for Fulham. Yeah, he says, uh, he says uh, well, he goes, no pressure then. He says, I hope you do well. You know, like, I hope you're better than what you've been recently. <laughs> All right, okay, no pressure. Just makes you more determined. You know, it makes you more determined um, 
we're a band of, band of brothers put together, weren't we? A band of misfits, uh, free transfers, players written off in their careers. Roy Hodgson, as manager. People were like, what are they doing signing Roy Hodgson as a manager? Last time he was in English football, it was a disaster. You know, so the whole combination was perfect. And, and what was important as well is that they put the right personalities together. And we had a good group of leaders in the, in the, in the team. He was superb, uh, you know, and we're talking someone that was sort of towards the back end of their career. Uh, Schwartz, he was one of them off the pitch, looked after himself, you know, to a T. Regimes, gym, running, uh, even his diet. And if you're disciplined off the pitch, then that's only going to go on to, on, to, on to pitch as well. Carroll, that's a great right foot! Oh, what a save by Schwarzer! Football now is a 24-7 sport. It's not just something you can do for two hours a day. It's a lifestyle, it's a constant. You have to be right and you have to be at the top of your game. And for the way that Mark looked after himself and conducted himself for, for the latter part of his careers is exemplary to any, any young goalkeepers watching. He's been to as a keeper, uh, his leadership skills, first and foremost, for me as a player, uh, whether you, um, you're marking at corners when you've got a goalkeeper barking orders at you, you know, pushing you, making you mark, mark the space, do this, um, that's huge. That's what you want from, from your goalkeeper, especially that stature as well. You know that someone that can come for crosses, he's a brilliant sh shot stopper. And here's Lennon, oh, fantastic save by Mark Schwarzer. Beautifully kept out by the Australian. Spurs just cannot find a way past him today. And it's a milestone day as well for goalkeeper Mark Schwarzer. This is 100th clean sheet in the Premier League. And I used to say it at the time when I was playing, you know, when you, you went on to keep 100 clean sheets, 150 clean sheets, 500 appearances in the Premier League, first foreigner for a non brit They're nice at the time. And I think it's more something that you appreciate later on. You look back at it and go, oh, actually, that's pretty cool. Yeah, wow, I did, wow. That's, that's impressive, I suppose. Um, and, and that's how I look at it. It's an emotional day for Mark Sforza. He spent 11 years here and participated in Middlesbrough's greatest day, the League Cup final win five years ago. It's his 500th game in English football today. I got booed every time my name was talk, called out or I touched the ball. Well, it's a thumb mechanic from Chutzai. What a save from Mark Schwarzer. Superb stop from the returning goalkeeper. He has bitten the hand that once fed him. Fantastic stop. Chutzai. This is Marlon King. Back to Stuart Downing, and Schwarzer's there again. The pressure is building on Mark Schwarzer's goal. The ball fired in, and Mark Schwarzer gets his hand on that too. But he had to. A game which was a must-win match for Gareth Southgate's side has ended in a draw. It could have been so much different, but for a returning Middlesbrough hero, Mark Schwarzer. What was the reception like from the Borough fans? It was a bit mixed. Um, you know, there was a there was a decent cheer at times, but there was also quite a lot of booze, uh, booze and abuse. But you know, I expected that to a degree as well. You know, they're fighting for their lives, and and uh, you know, they they desperately needed a win today. After the game, the first questions I get asked. I'm, I've, I've relegated Middlesbrough. I'm like, you're only as good as the 38 game show you are. And if you get relegated at the end of the season, you get relegated because you're not good enough after 38 games. It's not one game. And, and that's, that's what's difficult to take at times. Ronaldo, this will come to Park. Amazing save, Schwarzer. Rooney, Schwarzer denies. Manchester United again. Terrific, brilliant double stop. Now Rooney, danger still not gone. Schwarzer's touch once more. Off his defender and behind. The first two years were probably the most enjoyable periods of my whole career because for so many reasons. And, and part, part of that is because of proving so many people wrong, to show that there's still life in the old dog yet. Well, I think his secret is his incredible professionalism and his incredible desire to keep himself at you know, top level fitness, which is not easy to do as you get older. It's much easier to want to rest on your laurels, but uh, he's still got something to go for. He wants to be president of the Australia, Australia, I think, so he's still got plenty to go for yet. To have gone on a run like we did, to rewrite the history books again, we got to the UEFA Cup final. To be part of that um, was, was amazing. 
you know, we were a group that all had kind of a similar mission. And um, yeah, it was amazing. Helped on by Jermaine Genus. Peter Crouch. Oh, fine save by Schwarzer once and twice to deny first Crouch and then Genus. Fulham brought in Martin Yell was the manager and they tried to sign uh, Martin Stecklenburg six months before the end of the season, so at the end of the January transfer window. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was, again, really, really disappointing in the way it was un had unfolded and Martin Yell fell out with me on purpose. From that moment onwards, obviously the deal collapsed, the rest is history, and I stayed and I played and I played the rest of the season and arguably I think I played as good as I played in that first two seasons, that last six months. And it was because, again, I wanted to really shove it in his face. I wanted to prove him wrong. I wanted to, I was so angry at the situation, the way I was treated. That's how you prove people wrong. You go on and you get better and you do something better. And, and the, the Chelsea move came about. How'd it come about? I don't know, it was free transfer. I was around the corner, had a lot of experience. They wanted a number two. Jose identified goalkeeper as one of the positions. They needed an experienced number two that was happy to be there as a number two. It was one of them names that was always there or thereabouts, wasn't he? And, and maybe, I mean, he finally did get the move to Chelsea, didn't he? Didn't really claim the, the number one spot, probably because it was a latter part of his, his career, so he knew he was going to be the, the supporting role. But again, what better person would you want to be a supporting role than, than someone of discipline but him? I was a number two and that was something that was really hard to take. But then it was Chelsea, and then it was being number two behind Petr Cech. Not a bad thing. <laughs> Having the opportunity to work with someone like Jose Mourinho, and then the list of players. So that experience and the opportunity to play at the top end of the table, to try and win every single game, to try and win every competition that you play in, that's the overwhelming sensation and expectation the minute you walk through that door was something I'd never change. The older he got, I actually think the better he got. Like a nice bottle of wine. He, he stored it and it just got better and better and better. And his attitude got better and better and better. I mean, his last couple of years in football was probably his best. You join us at Anfield on yet another day of vast anticipation and excitement in the city of Liverpool. It is Anfield's penultimate game of the season. The next time Liverpool's players make this walk, hear this sound, the next time it may be their coronation day. Mark Schwarzer is one who is indicative of a Chelsea side so markedly changed for a variety of reasons. We, we had all, a lot of substitutions playing, so everything's against you. Everyone's writing it off, everyone's saying that Liverpool is going to win the game. And the only people that believed that Liverpool wouldn't win the game was the guys in the change room, the guys in, in that team, and Jose Mourinho. And he had a clear plan of how to frustrate them, how to slow the game down, how to win the game, in typical Jose Mourinho style. Schwarzer is again taking the, uh, taking the maternity to affect his clearance. And they couldn't get past us, they couldn't get around us. I mean, I, probably, I think I probably had five or six shots to save that whole game. So, we amount of blocks we made it at the edge of the box. Another an amazing, an amazing team effort, and yeah, we we derailed their their run. You know that was the beginning of it. Um, so yeah, it was an amazing experience. A fine day at Stamford Bridge here in late spring. Chelsea still in with a chance as well of claiming that Premier League title. They need three points though, and they need three points against the Norwich City side who are desperately trying to secure their own Premier League safety. I remember the game, but I don't remember it was the fact that it was my 150th clean sheet, so to speak. Like I said, that, those, were, those sort of things weren't really, they, they weren't something that I actually looked at. Um, it was more about where we were finished on the table, the appearances sometimes you, you had a bit more, you took a bit more note to it, and generally because that was a little bit more publicised. Um, I would listen, I was just grateful I was having an opportunity to play. You know, people say you're back-to-back uh, Premier League winner. I'm not. I was at Chelsea for six months uh, of that season. So I was there for 18 months for that last six months. 
I didn't play, I didn't sit on the bench for one single Premier League game. Yes, it's a team game, it's a squad game, but in my eyes, you, you, you have to, you have to t partake in some way. And if the league felt that it was more than that, they would give everyone in the squad a, a medal. They obviously believe that you have to play five games, um, which I'm fine with. Schwarzer on the Leicester bench after joining from Chelsea. Gosh, absolute dogfight of a relegation battle. I mean, it was an amazing end of the season as well. Guys went on to, to win, what was it, eight out of the last 10 games, drawing one. And that just continued, that momentum continued into the next season. And Sergio Aguero, and Mark Schwarzer gets to it. With a brilliant save from Schwarzer. If anyone in their wildest dreams thought that uh, Leicester had a chance of winning the Premier League title, it wouldn't have been 5,000 to 1, would they? We say hello now to five players who have been on the fringe, but not played quite enough to win a medal. Mark Schwarzer, who for the second year running is the understudy goalkeeper of the champions. I was very fortunate enough to be in the inner circle. I, 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 I had front row seats, and it was an amazing experience but I'm not a Premier League winner. I had a great view though. York denied by Schwarzer. It's Lundberg. Enough left. Terrific save by Mark Schwarzer. Arteta against Schwarzer. This for three points. Brilliantly saved by Schwarzer. My legacy. Longevity. <laughs> um, I suppose someone that I always, I'd like to think that, you know, I was looked upon as someone who always worked very hard, um, always left everything on the training field and on the football pitch. I'd like to think people perceive me as being honest, um, hardworking, and a team player. He was big, commanding, domineering, but he was also agile to make the saves. He was a very, very good shot stopper. Could command his defence very well. And he was very, very good with a high ball. I always, you know, you thought somebody of his size should dominate the box, and he did dominate the box. Um, his reflexes and his agility for, for such a big guy as well was, was impressive. I, I wouldn't change anything because it is what it is and your career is unfolded because of the path that you've taken. I probably exceeded all my own expectations in one way. On the other hand, you look back at it and you go, what I know now, of course that was going to happen. <laughs> but you weren't to know back then. Mark had this ability to be as tall and agile and, you know, he, he kind of had everything in his game. When you play for the top six, you probably don't save as many as you would as, as down the bottom. But again, you could flip it and say, well, you're going to have to save twice as many at the, at the lower levels, so you're going to have to be up on your game. The thing that I'm most proud about on that list is that the vast majority of my career, all of my career, other than the eight Premier League games, whatever it was, with, with, with Chelsea, have been all with the so-called lesser clubs. Clubs that have either always been a proper fight to stay in the league, mid-table, sometimes knocked on, on, on the door of Europe. So I think that's probably the, the thing that stands out the most for me is that, yeah, I played more games than most of those guys but I've also played for a lot lesser clubs, uh, you know, lesser clubs in stature and types of, um, you know, ability in terms of winning things and competing at the top end of the table. Maloney, Angelan just stood off him. Maloney deflected, what a save that is. Mark Schwarzer with a wonder stop. But to see that list and being the one that's the highest there of the player that's played for the lesser clubs out of all, yeah, that probably makes you the proudest.